There are really three big mistakes you can make when editing your aerial photography from drones. And we're gonna learn those all here today. Hey, also don't forget, we're still giving away that DJI Avada drone. Head over to m0acontest.com to check it out and learn more, see the rules, get signed up in there. I wanna pass the baton off to Eric. Eric really works in our graphics team here at M0A and just does such a great job of making so many images you see out there really pop out on social media, inside our Remote Pilot 101 courses, our Private Pilot, Instrument Pilot, our Manned Aviation courses as well. Really goes above and beyond and really has some, some wisdom to share on his heart on three mistakes that everybody makes early on, but, uh, Knowledge is, uh, is potential power, right? Potential power if we go ahead and use it. Well, here's some of that wisdom, here's some of that knowledge, and now it's your job to go apply it. Hi, we're gonna be covering three beginner photo editing mistakes that I see a lot of. First, we'll be shooting with the improper file size and formats. Then we'll cover destructive versus non-destructive edits, and then cropping using a proper aspect ratio. I often get asked about file size. Do I really need to be shooting at this high of a resolution? Do I need this big of a file size? The short answer is maybe not, but I always recommend shooting at the largest file size available. The biggest reason is that we can take that larger file size and make it smaller, but we can't take that small size and make it larger without suffering a loss in quality. A question I often get is, do I need to be shooting in JPEG or RAW format? Is one format better than the other? Well, me personally, I always shoot raw because it gives me more flexibility in post-production. But to really make that decision, you need to understand how the camera captures the data that is recorded in a JPEG and a raw image. I'm gonna break that down to you right now. A JPEG works by when we take our camera or drone, we set a picture profile in that maybe vivid, sharp, high contrast, just for example. But when we take that photo, those settings that we have chosen are applied to that image all the other data that the sensor collected is disregarded, and then we are given a file written on our memory card. Now this file size is much smaller than a raw file, and it could be a perfectly usable photograph. So why would you need to shoot raw? Well, let's look at how a raw photo was captured. Raw files work by they capture the same photograph, but all of the data that the sensor has collected is embedded into the file on your memory card. Now when we go into post-production, we have all of that data to work with, so we could pull out shadows, highlights, and other areas that you might not have been able to get from a JPEG image. Now, the disadvantage is RAW files are much bigger than a JPEG image, so we take up more space on your hard drive, more space on your memory card. Here's the image we're going to be working with. I shot this both in JPEG and RAW on my drone, and so we're looking at the JPEG version right now, and you can see there's some not a lot of shadow detail. It's a little dark through here. The clouds... Just leaves a lot to be desired. So I'm gonna go in here and just make some exposure adjustments on this image, just to show you what a JPEG image can do. So we bring up the exposure, it starts to look a little bit better. We can bring in some more layers and make some other adjustments. Let's work on our curves. You can see the image is starting to look a little bit better, but then when you come down here, you notice it gets the discoloration there. And you're like, why is it doing that? The reason is, is there's no data in the pixel detail to bring out in this image. So the computer is just trying to randomly figure out what goes there, but there's no data there to collect in the image. So it doesn't quite look right. This is where JPEG starts to come short when it comes to editing. Okay, let's now take a look at this image from the raw file. This file was 36 megabytes, whereas the JPEG was only three megabytes. At first glance, you don't see any differences. But here we're gonna go into the raw editor and make some changes. Right off the bat, we can see where we can change our white balance. We have different settings that we can choose from. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, all pretty much similar to things that you'll be using. So let's make a few quick changes here. Let's bring up the exposure, bring up the contrast, the highlights, and you see it, it's making improvements, but it doesn't look any different than the JPEG for editing right now. So let's go into the shadows. This is where the extra detail is really gonna come out. We notice here, we don't have any detail here when we look at the water, it's just all burnt out. There's nothing there, and we couldn't bring it out in a JPEG. 
So let's start bringing out the shadows and adjust the black levels. And you can tell right away, this water, we have detail here. We can see the ripples, the waves. That information wasn't in the JPEG. Just to give a quick before and after. So with just a few clicks, we've already brought out more detail into the image. That's just some of the power that raw image processing has. Another great feature is when we make changes, we can always come back in and change later, or we can always revert it back to the original default image. One of the biggest mistakes that I see beginning photographers make is they make destructive edits to their photos. When you're shooting JPEG and you make some changes and you save the file, you can't go back and fix what you've done. I'm gonna give you an example of a destructive edit. I'm gonna exaggerate the exposure setting here just for demonstration purposes. So we've set that in and we think that it looks good and we're gonna go save the image. Now that we've saved it, I'm gonna close it out and open it up again. Okay, so we've opened the image up and you see it's exactly as it was when we saved it. But now we realize that was a little too much exposure adjustment. I wanna undo that. So if we go back to image adjustment and exposure, you notice we can't bring that picture back. What's happened is that we disregarded that data from the original file when we adjusted the exposure and it saved it. That's a destructive edit. We've essentially ruined this image. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the same process, but in a non-destructive format. This is my number one photo editing tip. It's using adjustment layers and masks. We're back to our original boat image and we're going to come down to the bottom of the screen and we will see the adjustment layers panel. We're going to go to exposure just as we did previously. And we're going to over exaggerate the exposure. If we look at our layers tab, we can actually see that we've created a new layer by clicking on this icon down here that has our exposure settings. If we click the eyeball, it hides the exposure that we just changed and we're back to our original image. Now, if we go to save this file, it's gonna open a dialog box and it's gonna prompt us to save it as a PSD. This is a Photoshop native format. If you're using a different editor, it'll be the same process. It'll just be in that program's native format. We're gonna go ahead and save the image. And now we can reopen it. Now we reopen the image and we want to make adjustments to the exposure because it's a little too much. We click on the exposure layer and the dialog box opens and we can make the changes that we want. That looks about right. Now you notice we made these changes that we were not able to do in a JPEG image alone when we were destructive editing. And if we want to turn it off, we can see we still have the original image here and there's the changes with the adjustment layer. There's no limit to how many adjustment layers you use. You can use them for exposure, curves, and other items as well. My next tip is using masking. Masking works with adjustment layers and it allows us to apply an effect, but we might not want that effect on the entire image. With masking, we can highlight areas of the image that we do not want that effect to apply to. We're gonna give it a quick example here of how this works. We're gonna add a new adjustment layer we're going to use the levels this time. And what I'm going to do is just bring out some more blue in the image for the sky. Let's say right about there. But let's just say that we don't want all the water here to be affected. Now this is just an example of how this works. When we go back here, we see our levels and we see this bracket over this white box here. This is our masking area. We go to our eraser tool. And from here, we simply erase the area and you'll see that area is being masked out of the photo. And if we look here, we can also see but it's showing where on the image that it's being masked. To speed this up, we can make our brush bigger. I 
as we can see, we've applied this mask. So the water has stayed the same, but yet the sky is bluer. You can see how this can be really powerful in your edits, where you can really pinpoint areas that you want to enhance. Let's look at how we crop an image to a specific aspect ratio. The first thing we're going to want to do is go to our crop tool. Once selected, we'll notice that a boundary box has been put around our image, but we're going to want to focus on this drop down at the top. We'll see that we have different aspect ratios pre-selected for us. We're going to want to print at 16 by 20 print for this example, so we'll choose the 4 fifths ratio. We see that it puts the boundary box, but it's in a portrait orientation. To change this, we go to the two arrows, and we now have our image flipped to a landscape. We'll click the checkbox, and our image is now properly sized and cropped to be printed as a 16 by 20. Now let's say we want to take this image and crop it to be in a video project as well. To do that, we would again go to the crop tool, go to our ratio, it's like 16 by 9, standard widescreen format. Now you can see the constraints have been changed, and we can move the image around to frame it up how we would like the final product to be. This looks good there. Then we'll go to the checkbox, and now we have the image size that can be in a widescreen format for a video project. Now that you understand proper file formats, destructive versus non-destructive photo edits, and how to crop at a proper aspect ratio, you can now turn your photos from this into this. So did you learn something there? I know I did. I learned something every time. We hire some of the smartest people uh, around us as well, and I love learning from them. What are some other tips? Let us know in the comment section down below this video. Don't forget m0acontest.com to win that DJI Avada drone. Big live stream coming up all about that as well. We'll announce the winners uh, of, uh, of the main prize and some other prizes in there as well. Don't forget like, subscribe here on YouTube, Facebook as well. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you.